Today we're going to test the range of a stock Suron X electric bike. We're going to be tracking miles with GPS and how many hours we get out of our ride. The test is on some North Idaho sandy single track and hill climbs. The sand's a little bit wet, so that's to our advantage. I'll be doing another video very similar to this on dirt single track later this week. Now the only performance upgrades I have on the bike currently are the 54 tooth sprocket and an upgraded tire. We are out at Stampede, which is the local, local sandy single track. Now I'm on the stocks are on. This is gonna be a mirror video to the 72 volt in the sand video. I'm gonna to try to hit all the same tracks do that same super steep hill climb. I was going to talk about the difference, you know? I'm thinking we're not going to make it up the hill climb to the 72 volt, but the conditions are a little better today, so we have that going for us. Less mud and ice, so I might be able to get more speed for the run up, which will be crucial, but let's see what we get when we get there. Again, if you hear that battery shaking around, that's because I still have the tray extender from the 72 volt, so it is shaking around a little bit, but that normally doesn't happen with the Surons. We're right around the corner from the big hill climb. Here she is. All right, looks like the sand's still a little bit wet, which will help because we won't bury it at least. And the run up is way better. So conditions are basically perfect for trying to get this beast up there. I started right here when I hit it on the 72 volt. I'm gonna go further back to get as much speed as possible. Let's get it. Full throttle from the start. Haven't let off yet. Come on, baby. Yeah, that's a good old fashioned no way Jose. And like I said, conditions are perfect. So you're not gonna be exactly climbing sand mountains with this thing. But let's see how it does on the sandy single track. Now I do have my phone, so I'm tracking the miles. And as you can see, you just really need to get speed when you're in the sand. In the dirt, when you have perfect traction and you're not burying it, you get away with a lot more. But in the sand, you really, really notice any bit of extra power you can get on these bikes. Once you upgrade the power, you pin it at the bottom of a hill and you only lose speed because of traction. Here you lose speed, you're giving it full throttle, but it can't turn the motor as quick, you lose RPMs. And then you're dead in the water and you're not making it up the hill. That's the giant puddle I almost got me last ride. A lot of you guys noticed that one. So this should be a good test. This is the hill with the two trees on it that I made it up with relative ease in the 72 volt. I'm pretty sure with a really good run up, I got it on stock power as well. It's just gonna be keeping the speed to get over that second tree. 
With a 72 volt, you could just roost right on up it and hop on over that tree. With this power, I'll be reliant on 100% just momentum. Uh-oh. Maybe we won't make it. See, if that hill was dirt, I think we would have made it no problem. Here's a double tree. Wish me luck. Whew. Barely, but yes. Okay. Nice. I am so happy about that one. Yes! Suspension upgrades coming soon, friends. Just waiting on things to get back in stock. Let's see, we're at 69% battery. And that is at almost four miles. Not bad. Let's do the whole circuit. See how many miles we can get in before dark. This is only my third time here as an adult. So I'm not really familiar with the tracks, but I'm pretty sure this goes on for a really long time. So I have to keep my eye on the battery so I know I got enough to go back if I don't think I'm going to make the full loop. But I'm pretty sure I have friends with stock surrounds who have said they've done this whole loop before, so let's get it. So the handling on this bike is really good. I thought in this looser sand once it dried up it would be a little slippery, but it's really fine. I've still got the stock tire on in the front, and that's mainly because it's lighter than most of the aftermarket options. And yeah, I'm not sliding around that bad. Definitely be getting more speed in the uphill portions and acceleration out of the corners with the 72 volt, but having a blast. I think I can, I think I can. 72 volt would be absolutely crushing it up that right now. The drier the sand gets and the more ruddy, you definitely notice how small the wheelbase on the Suron is. On a full size gas bike, you would just be plowing through that, not even aware that the conditions changed. I have a feeling this sand is going to demolish the battery. Eat it up so quick with all that resistance. And I'm basically at full throttle the entire time. Oh wow. This is full throttle. The dry sand just eats away your power. It's not even steep, it's full throttle. 
We're just churning along. Wow. This might not even be super surrunnable in the full on summer when this is just light dust sand. All right, 43%. Let's try and get home. That'd be rad. Wow, the deep stuff just eats it alive. You really need them extra horsepower to chug through that dry sand. And it's still not even that dry. It gets a lot more dry than this. See when the sand's just a little more hard packed, she can climb it. So out here on a rainy day, I could probably do the full circuit. And I'm sure it uses way less battery because you're not slipping the back tire as much. It's absolutely having the time of my life on this bike. That is for sure. Weight obviously plays a huge role on range and performance of these things. And I weigh 170 pounds with my gear on. So you can take that into account if you're a lot lighter than me, you'll get better range. Maybe the stock suspension is a little bit better. You won't bottom it out as easily. If you're heavier than me, the suspension is going to be even worse. <laughs> And same with the range. But honestly, for most people, by the time you kill this battery, you might be done. I'm not, but I'm completely obsessed. You gotta pry my cold dead hands off these handlebars. flat out on a bike. When you're just panning the full throttle, that is so much fun. I guess see videos online of people on KTM 125s just wide open up these roads and it just looks fantastic. So you can do the same thing in second gear on a 450 and maybe you're not having as much fun. <laughs> yeah, you got the power to really send it, but there's something about just being wide open on a bike. That's great. Guess I'm the last one here. Back at the truck, just before dark, just like we were looking at, we got a flashing battery of 16% and a grand total of, drum roll please, 9.18 miles, duration 50 minutes. So yeah, we would have completely killed this battery if we rode for a full hour like that. Average speed, 11.2 miles an hour. That's a record for me, and that's including stopping to get videos of the bike. If you're thinking about getting one of these bikes, again, take your weight into consideration. And these are the toughest conditions for battery, for sure. Just chugging through. Out of that 50 minutes, I was probably on the full throttle 40 minutes, for real. So that absolutely wrecks batteries. Keep that in mind, but overall, I'm really impressed with the bike. Again, nothing done to it performance-wise except for that rear tire and the sprocket. So yeah, that is the end of this one. I'm gonna switch it back to the 72 volt now and have a lot of fun and explore some of these new trails out here. 
How's it cracking? I'll watch your videos, dude. Really? Yeah. Dude, it's nice to meet you. Papel. Papel? Yeah. Nice to meet you. No way. <laughs> so cool.